Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Resource PNG. This week we are privileged to have with us Minister for Environment, Conservation and Climate Change, John Pundari, to discuss some issues regarding his ministry and their programs in PNG. Minister Pundari, thank you so much for joining us here on Resource thank PNG. Thank you. Now, first of all, I'd like to talk about the recent uh, COP21 meeting in Paris. Uh, there were some important uh, things that came out for Papua New Guinea regarding the final uh, article at the conference. Can you just uh, give us a brief rundown for our viewers? Exactly right. Before I come to that, let me say this. Now, the Paris meeting was therefore so very, very important. It was a significant uh, meeting for global uh, leaders to meet uh, because everyone now believes that we now are confronted with a challenge that everyone on planet Earth will have to work on a plan A to save our only home. Nothing more, nothing less. So under the uh, United Nations uh, uh, framework Convention on Climate Change, uh, uh, conferences of the parties, uh, nations that, that our global community uh, come together. This was our 21st uh, session in the which uh, we had to aggressively and ambitiously uh, see uh, what uh, best solutions uh, we as nations on planet Earth can be able to work out uh, to ensuring that we rescue and uh, save our only, uh, only home. And therefore, uh, the meeting, as I said earlier, was very, very significant and very, very important. Be it a developed nation on planet Earth, be it a developing country on planet Earth, every one of us are confronted with the, threats, with the threats of climate change and we've got to all do the right thing for ourselves because there is no other option. Plan A had to come out from the Paris Agreement. <laughs> and did we, did we achieve that? Well, I have my own personal views about that. Something which I believe I will discuss with you going forward. From the final agreement from uh, COP21, there were some few highlights for Papua New Guinea. There are some positives. Uh, Red Plus and Forest Conservation Initiatives in the final agreement. What does that mean for communities in Papua New Guinea? Well, uh, as you and Hai uh, uh, would know and uh, would come to maybe understand now, and appreciate uh, the facts or the root causes of climate change. And uh, one of the root causes is, is the fact of the emission of, of carbon. Now, uh, one way of directly mitigating is, of course, to reducing carbon emission. And secondly, I believe, is, is the fact of the question you have just raised is, is conserving, is protecting our rainforest. Now, Red Plus is a way of, of ensuring that we source finance, uh, be able to ensuring that uh, we trade our carbon, we uh, build an economy around our conserved uh, rainforest areas. And for Papua New Guinea, it's uh, unique and it's peculiar because you and I agree that uh, without partnering with our landowners, you can never have a successful Red Plus uh, project in Papua New Guinea. You mentioned carbon trading. A lot of people would remember the April Salome project in the Sipic Plains. Yes. Uh, what is the progress on that uh, from a ministerial uh, point of view? Well, April Salome is a very, very important uh, project for us. It's, it's a first of its kind in Papua New Guinea. We've got to do it right. We've got to set the right precedence. It's got to win the international uh, confidence in as much as we would want to win domestic confidence. Uh, we need to win the confidence of corporate institutions globally that uh, wishes to uh, trade carbon with us uh, as a means of revenue flow that can help benefit our landowners and ensure the uh, 
the sustainability of the project. And therefore, we've got to do it right. At the present time, there are a few issues there which are not that cumbersome or difficult for us to overcome. I know that uh, we will get things right as we go forward. Uh, first of all, you know, I must uh, appreciate the landowners of April Salome. You know, without uh, them having to surrender the land to be able to participate in schemes of carbon trade, we wouldn't be able to have a project as such. I think it's come to a stage where we are able to measure the volumes of the carbon that is there and we can be able to trade that. But there are issues uh, such as uh, the fact of it being an FMA area, forest management area. Uh, we have uh, given them timber permits to do sustainable logging. And uh, of course, you know, you, you, you will have to decide whether you go into sustainable logging or preserve and conserve the uh, rainforest and be able to use that to, to trade carbon with. Well, government have also made decisions in cabinet that we will promote that project as a, as, as a carbon project. And uh, we can't have both ways. Mm. Now, the saddest thing is that uh, our landowners uh, have uh, taken matters to court, and there are court decisions that amounts to about 58 million kina that we need to compensate the landowners. But of course, we need to have those matters settled out of court. And, um, and you know, they just can't. Uh, benefit of the 58 million kina or whatever we decide out of court and, uh, and at the same time the same group of people being able to benefit of the flows of, of carbon trading schemes. So we need to find some understanding there somewhere and we need to approach the landowners again, get everything right and move the project forward. Uh, as your Minister for Climate Change, uh, uh, first piloting project of carbon trade in Papua New Guinea, we've got to do it right. We've got to set the right precedence. It must come with integrity. It must come with credibility. It must be able to win that corporate, global corporate constitu uh, uh, confidence uh, and, uh, and uh, domestically as well. And we've just got to do it right. And if we do April Salome right, all other areas that we would want to uh, factor in as projects of carbon trading uh, conserved uh, projects will, uh, will flow very well. Do you have a specific timeline on, on uh, how soon you'd like this April Salome project well, to be? Well, as soon as possible. We have been working on it. There has been some uh, uh, benefits of carbon trade already, as you and I know, over the, uh, over the papers. And uh, when I talk about integrity going forward, going into the future, it's all about people who promote the project for, for, for flows of carbon trade benefits must also be able to account for the funds uh, that flow in. And we would want to make sure and ensure that the landowners uh, have satisfying outcomes for an area that they conserve to promote for, for, for carbon trade. But we, we, we've got to resolve uh, the, the, the pertaining issues that, that concerns the credibility of the project. What other sites apart from the April Salome project area are you looking to develop as uh, potential carbon trading areas in PNG? Well, the uh, Climate Change uh, Management Act at the present time uh, allows for voluntary uh, uh, schemes of uh, climate change uh, uh, program and projects in the country and for carbon trade. Uh, people who wish to uh, uh, register their area to participate in schemes of uh, carbon trade uh, can now use the mechanism or the legal framework uh, that provides that uh, window of opportunity and the uh, Climate Change Authority uh, will be able to assist. Minister, back to the COP21 final agreement, Articles 8 and 9, uh, they talk about loss and damage and as well as uh, financing for climate change initiatives. Yes, yes. I believe uh, the Office of Climate Change recently received some uh, money, uh, signed off on an agreement for uh, climate uh, resili uh, building resilience on climate change in PNG. 
are you able to just bring us up to speed on that uh, project by the ADB and uh, the OCCD? Uh, exactly right. Uh, well, loss and damage is uh, is 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 a uh, very uh, important uh, article uh, because uh, uh, developed nations uh, uh, were taken to task to compensate for <laughs> uh, most of their uh, activities in uh, in uh, in uh, emitting uh, carbon, resulting in the uh, global uh, warming that uh, we. Uh, confronted now with extreme uh, climatic events that cause a lot of losses and, and, uh, and, and damages. And uh, for us in the Pacific region, you know, loss and damage was, uh, was a very important article for us. And uh, I'm glad to say that uh, we've uh, been able to secure that. So there is uh, funding that will be available through the uh, Green Climate Fund. Uh, so, uh, uh, Nations that are affected as a result of extreme uh, weather events can be able to uh, seek compensatory relief from those funds. Also, uh, adaptation is uh, a different uh, scheme of funding that we can be able to uh, source out from the uh, Green uh, Climate Fund. Recently, of course, yes, we have uh, signed uh, different agreements uh, between ourselves, the Treasury and the, uh, and the uh, Asian Development uh, uh, Bank who are basically administrators of uh, the climate change funding. Uh, it's, uh, it's called the uh, uh, Building uh, Resilience on uh, Climate Change Funding and uh, uh, the funding uh, amounts to about uh, 30 million US dollar, of which uh, uh, two to about three million US dollar will be co-funded by the Papua New Guinea uh, government. You know, sometimes uh, it is it is so very very difficult to accessing those funds, and uh, that was one of our grievances raised at the uh, Paris conference. Well, developed nations come and promise us so much money uh, to be invested in Green Climate Fund. So, to ensuring that vulnerable nations like Papua New Guinea and other uh, states in the Pacific can be able to access uh, in their different programs of resilience, adaptation, loss and damages, etc. But let me say this, whilst they flaked flag billions and billions of dollars, uh, they make it very, very difficult for us to access those funds. So we wanted easier access to, to, to the funds. We wanted uh, the processes to be uh, made lighter and uh, to ensuring that uh, the benefits of those funds are actually realized and the, uh, the assistance sought does benefit our people and our country. In the recent agreement that we have signed with the ADB and Treasury, uh, Climate Change will provide leadership to that and you will uh, uh, now find that uh, we will have needed assistance for, for, for people. Uh, for example, uh, the cataracts uh, in the uh, autonomous uh, region of Bougainville to, to get some support and help uh, so as to ensuring that uh, they are relocated, they uh, are looked after. You know, the Cataract Highlands uh, with the rising sea level, uh, the plantations inundated by uh, salt uh, water, and uh, if you look at areas that they grow crops for, their they, they daily uh, livelihood in, uh, in food crops, uh, inundated by uh, the rising uh, level of salt water. And, uh, you know, Papua New Guinea having to be out there at Paris, we had reason to be there. We, we, we were seriously concerned, as many other uh, islands in the Pacific. And if you look at the uh, Pacific Island uh, Forum meeting that we had here recently, we made uh, declarations uh, to, to work together, to have one voice in, uh, in different areas that we uh, stand to, to fight for support 
for our part of the region. And I'm so very happy that uh, now we will come to realize uh, some funding that were available even before uh, the uh, Paris uh, conference that we can be able to utilize. It's taken us more than four years just to negotiate and uh, come to the uh, recent agreements that we have signed. But I must uh, thank the uh, agencies uh, of government that participated with uh, the Office of Climate Change in identifying uh, uh, pilot uh, projects that we uh, will fund through this uh, funding and uh, cater it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's one of those. Now, the countries islanders, they're recognized as the world's first climate change refugees. There's been some uh, moves to have them resettled in other parts of Bougainville, but unfortunately that has not worked out. What do you think has gone wrong? Well, you know, I, uh, in about 2007, there was about two million uh, Kina that was made available by the government. And I know also that uh, the autonomous uh, Bougainville uh, uh, government decided to utilize that fund for maybe three or four other <laughs> atolls uh, or island communities as well. And, uh, you know, such funding is insufficient. Uh, it's financial resourcing to meeting the challenges of uh, climate change will always confront Papua New Guinea. And uh, cataracts is, is one example already uh, in uh, uh, given the fact of our uh, financial ability. Like I said, 2007, two million kina was insufficient. There was a lot to do. There wasn't enough for cataracts. It wasn't enough for any other island atolls as well. Uh, we are grateful that uh, International Organization on Migration, uh, we have recently signed a memorandum of understanding with the Office of Climate Change, and now uh, working with the people of uh, Cataracts, trying to help uh, resettle them. Uh, but uh, uh, with the recent agreement uh, that we have entered into now, and we've got this uh, finance available, and Cataracts having to have been identified uh, as beneficiaries of uh, this funding scheme, uh, we should be able to do more for them. And it's encouraging. Do you have similar plans for other islands within Papua New Guinea that may say, uh, face a similar situation? Oh yeah, exactly right. Uh, some islands are in Milan Bay and, uh, and, and, and other parts of the country in the New Guinea Islands region will uh, Will, uh, will benefit uh, from this funding. But let me say this, <laughs> 30 million US dollars sounds, sounds like a lot of money, but when it comes to actual realization of, uh, of, of funding activities, uh, you will always find that it's insufficient. So we've got to do more, we've got to do more. You mentioned the Office of Climate Change and Development is undergoing some reform uh, in, in a bid to make it an authority. Uh, can you just bring us up to date on, on that progress? Well, January this year, uh, it became an authority. Uh, the Climate Change uh, Bill was approved, sanctioned, voted unanimously, supported by Parliament, and uh, went through its normal processes, signed off, gazetted. Uh, we are an authority now, and uh, I've got uh, submissions in Cabinet. Uh, to appoint the uh, transitional committee, uh, so as to uh, so as to appointing uh, through processes within uh, the act that we have now, a managing director for the organisation, and and uh, it will roll. <laughs> Just one final question: uh, What do you think would be the biggest challenge facing Papua New Guinea regarding climate change in 2016? I said earlier that I have my own opinion about whether we really de really achieved the master plan, the master agreement to save uh, planet Earth. I have my own concerns. My concerns are this. You know, pre-industrial uh, period, uh, our carbon measured about 275 parts per million. You know, parts per million is, is something that, that science used to measure. Uh, uh, carbon molecules against other molecules that are in the atmosphere. Now, uh, during uh, the pre-industrial age periods, our carbon uh, was around 275 uh, parts per million. 
uh, from the 18 uh, from from the 1800s to the present uh, times is a result of anthropogenic pro 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 uh, activities or mankind uh, activities in burning uh, coal, uh, coal, uh, oil, uh, gas for that matter. And those activities have increased uh, over time. And as a result, our carbon measures about 400 parts per million. Now that is very dangerous for planet Earth and, uh, and has caused an increase of about a degree uh, Celsius in global uh, temperature and uh, we have been experiencing this extreme uh, weather patterns and in our own region I think you look at uh, Vanuatu uh, we have uh, gone through some turbulent uh, times of cyclones etc and it's not going to get any easier going forward and let me also say this you know at, at the present time the global community is emitting about two parts per million uh, of carbon every year. Now, if that doesn't reduce, you know, global warming is going to increase because of the increase in carbon, and uh, it's just going to uh, make it worse in, uh, in, uh, in uh, extreme uh, climatic events that is going to be catastrophic for the global community. When we went to Paris, we took with us our uh, INDC, they call uh, the Intended National uh, Determined uh, Contribution. And it's about how much carbon we would want to reduce in a given period of time. And of course, developed countries as well as developing nations uh, had to be concerned about the employment opportunities of their people, the economic well-being of their own countries, and it's not going to be easy uh, trying to reduce uh, the emission of carbon for that matter because uh, the energy sources come from coal and fuel etc you know and uh, and my worry personally is whether these nations uh, will be able to live up to their committed INDCs at the uh, Paris uh, uh, conference and the uh, agreement that resulted from it. My view was some of these nations could do more and could do better and I don't think they did well. Even Australia for that matter. I am so sorry to say that. Putting money into Green Climate Fund is one thing, you know, and the schemes of carbon trade to ensuring that we protect our rainforests, you know, in the schemes of red plus agendas, etc. It's good, you know, it's good. But that doesn't, that doesn't reduce uh, carbon emission. When we reduce carbon emission, then you have real solution. Climate change basically also gives us an opportunity for economic growth, gives us an opportunity for employment creation. And developed nations must invest more in technologies that will save the, uh, the, the planet that, that is so becoming dear to us because there is no, uh, not a planet B uh, to go to. And, uh, and uh, developed nations must grab the opportunity uh, to, to seeing the fact that climate change actually can, can uh, give them the opportunity to, to invest in green technologies and at the same time be able to grab uh, the benefits of economic growth and uh, employment creation as well. It's a challenge on every nation on planet Earth to do the right thing. Otherwise, there is not a planet B to go to. There is only plan A to stick with. And I don't think plan A is good enough for us. I think we've got to do more than the Paris Agreement if we have to save planet Earth. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Resource PNG. If you'd like to contribute to the program, get in touch with us via email on resourcepng at mtv.com.pg. 
you can also find us on Facebook. Just search for Resource PNG. Now to view this episode again, you can log on to www.mtv.com.pg where you can find the link to the Resource PNG page. We look forward to your company same time next week on Resource PNG. Bye for now.